Welcome to Import Gaming 101, your guide to importing games from around the world. And saying that is nothing new to me, as I've given presentations of this at anime conventions in the past. But this is the first time I've ever done a video on it. Even before dual screens, I imported games from Japan and learned how to navigate the menus. While I'm still learning Japanese, I feel some of you guys would be interested in this. So today we're going to be showing you the basics on how to import games from anywhere in the world. There are a good deal of reasons why someone would want to import games. The biggest reason is so you have more games. Think about it, if you've been living in America all your life, even if you're an avid gamer, you've most likely never have heard of games like The Firemen, Jump Superstars, Holy Diver, or Yume Penguin Monogatari. I understood three of those titles. But that's another reason to import a game, to help learn a language. Some might scoff at the idea of using a video game to learn a new language, although based on some of the comments we get, that's not too unheard of. Here's my retort, the Chinese room. The idea of the Chinese room is thus. If you're locked in a room with nothing but Chinese phrase books and another person passing you notes under the door in Chinese, you'd eventually learn enough through context clues to get a basic enough understanding of the language. There's more to it than that. That's basically how I explained Virtue's Last Reward and how I eventually learned yes and no in Japanese. So I don't think it's too bizarre of a concept to learn a different language from a game. But even if learning is not your thing, saving money might just be. Do you really want to spend $100 plus dollars for Guardian Heroes? Or $45 for the Japanese version? I think the answer speaks for itself. Another benefit of importing is that there's a chance of getting a game sooner. Granted it may not be in your language, but you'll get it faster. Nier Automata came out a month earlier in Japan than in the US, fully translated and voiced to boot. Importing can also help if you want the uncensored version of a particular game. As we mentioned in another video, if you want all the bloody glory of No More Heroes, and you live in, say, Europe, you might want to spring for the American version. And guys, I imagine this has happened to you before, it's happened to me. The game gets released where you live, but not physically, and you want to own it. Well, just import it. And there's also times where there are definitive versions of a game that get released in other countries. Take for example, Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube has a lot more content in the European version, so if you want the original, and not the 3DS remake, go for that edition. However, do note, if you get a Steam key from another country, chances are it won't work, and there's a reason for that. That reason being, region lockout. But what is region lockout? Simply put, it's when certain products, usually movies or video games, don't work in other countries. DVDs are split into six main regions, Blu-rays into three, and video games, under most circumstances, four. Those four being the USA, known as the NTSC, Japan, or JTSC, European and Australia is also known as the PAL region, and then there's China. China doesn't get a fancy name. Basically what all this means is if I buy a legitimate copy of a movie in, say, England, and it's in English and everything, and try to watch it on my US DVD or Blu-ray player, it just won't work. Now why do they do this, you ask? Two words. Anti-consumerism. I think that's just one word. Eh, uh, it's hyphenated. The rules are different. Just like the rules across the different countries. For example, if a company does not want to release something outside of its home country, they can. And some countries' laws allow them that. There are also embargoes, which I think we're all familiar with. Like how the US and Cuba don't allow a lot of trade between each other. But that's just how it goes sometimes. Which sucks, because it means we miss out on products that we may enjoy. That's how a lot of fans felt with the Japanese company that distributed Yuri on Ice didn't allow it to be sold outside of Japan. Thankfully, you never really have to worry about this with importing games. Region lock is divided between four different types, the first of which is full region lockout. This is mostly a problem with older consoles, but if you buy a game from another country, you'd either have to mod your own system or import one from the same region as the game. The second is semi-region locking, while very rare, the developers had the option to region lock the game, but they didn't. That's why I own a copy of Mushihimi Samafutari for the Xbox 360. The next type of lockout is physical lockout. It's when there's something in the system itself preventing certain games from being played, such as the Super Nintendo and N64, with these little tabs that prevent the foreign cartridges from slotting. But even if you remove them, a European game will still not work on a US or Japanese console. Thankfully, there do exist adapters to get around this problem. 
and these adapters also double to fix another problem. Certain games won't fit in other systems, like the Sega Master System in their Japanese games, or the Famicom fitting into an NES. Finally, there's no region lockout, also known as region free for video games, region zero for DVDs, and region ABC for Blu-rays. Okay, story time. When I was little, I had an American Game Boy Color that played a copy of Pokemon Silver that I got in Spain. Still have it too. Battery died though, so I can't save anymore. There are a couple of other older consoles that don't have region locks, like Neo Geo consoles, the TurboGrafx CD, the 3DO, the Game Gear, even the Philips CDI because I'm sure we all want to play the Flowers of Robert Maplethorpe. The only game systems from the last generation to be almost region-free were the DS, PS3, and PSP. DSi and DS games released in China were region-locked. PSP movies, not that I remember anyone really using them, were also region-locked. And while you can make a PSN account for any region, PSN points and DLC had to match the region of the game and the account they belonged to. Sadly, there's only one region-locked game, and it's Persona 4 Arena. I imagine European players were unhappy getting the game nearly a year later than the US. With the exception of the 3DS, this generation of consoles doesn't have any region lockout. The Xbox One, the PS4, the Switch and its eShop if you make a proper account, all of them are free of this restriction. And don't forget about the Vita. I almost did. Do people still play the Vita? Kinda. I still play mine from time to time. There are a few things to keep in mind when importing anything though, and that's the plug. I can promise you some things from Europe will not work in a US outlet, and vice versa. Yep, had to buy a few converters when I was vacationing. However, good news for anyone in Japan or the US, the plugs and voltage are the same. And for people importing a 3DS, or even the original DS, you can use your home country's charger to charge the system. The input is the same regardless of the country. Now it's time to talk about TVs and their compatibility with consoles. Back in the days of old dial TVs, all you had to do to get a Famicom working was either set to channel 95 or 96. More recent HD TVs are a little bit easier since HDMI's are pretty universal, but older American TVs had problems with reading PAL devices and still kinda do. Let's say you bought an N64 in Europe. It may not run properly because PAL consoles use different signals than NTSC consoles. Best case scenario, you get a black and white image. Worst case, your picture is going to be completely scrambled. Hey guys, just quick update. We're editing the video at like 2 o'clock in the morning and we found that there exist converter boxes so you can totally play PAL games on US TV and vice versa. Alright, I'm going to bed. Enjoy the rest of the video. While we're on the topic, Kid Icarus, in his PlayStation Classic review, mentioned how some of the games run off the European versions, which are choppier and about 17% slower than the NTSC version. If you play a PAL game on a US console, like say for example Alien Soldier, it runs extremely fast, as it was corrected for the European version. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about this with handhelds, that's why I'm able to play the Wonderswan, a Japanese only system, in the US. So yeah, if you're going to import games from another country, language is obviously a barrier. The two most likely versions to have multilingual options are the European and Asia versions. And yes, Asia, not Japan. There is a difference between the two. And this is where I come in and touch on some survival Japanese, starting with a basic yes or no, height, and EA. But I imagine you need to know more to save and load your game. Cebu and Rodo if those sound familiar, it's because they're loan words from English. Next up we have optional, which is options, Nihongo and Ego being Japanese and English respectively. Button is Boton, and Mode is Modo. And knowing Mode is key, since I imagine you want to play the story, or story. Finally there's Camera, which sounds like it would in Japanese, Kamira. Funny how some of these words are just English with Japanese accents, like Menu for the well, menu. But I know there's going to be a lot more words than we can cover here. When survival Japanese isn't enough, we have the internet. Hiragana or katakana charts combined with websites like jisho.org can give you a good starting point on translating some basic stuff. Though it should be said, this is not a substitute for learning the actual language, but a supplement. I'd recommend taking a class or finding a relevant subreddit or one of these books, apps, or websites. By the way, we are not sponsored by any of these apps. 
unless they want to sponsor us. But the question is now, where do I buy them? Well, you have a couple options, like eBay. I understand some people aren't savvy with it, so your next option could be Amazon. Though their selection is really just for modern games, but you can find a couple of retro titles there too. However, the best selection is PlayAsia. Granted, their prices aren't always the lowest, but if you're looking for something modern, chances are you're gonna find it there. Finally, I also recommend Japan GameStock, as they have a good selection of mainly retro titles and systems, and they don't typically kill the bank either. Now that you know where to start, time to get out there and start playing. Thanks a lot for taking a gander at Import Gaming 101. Let us know if you folks want another video where we focus on a system, the modding of said system, or the games we recommend for it. Check us out on our Twitter or other social media junk, and tell us if you've ever imported any games down in the comments below. So until next time everyone, take care, and thanks for the 20k subscribers. You all are awesome. So awesome.